Welcome to Milkshake Monday, episode 127. We're going to have a special uh, front end edition for Milkshake Monday regarding the current events that happened in the nation's capital. And I wanted to take you to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to move over to uh, chapter 3 for a couple of verses. So let's start at verse 1. I charge you, therefore, brethren, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Go to chapter three, verses 13 and 14. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been and in which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. Itching ears. People are being deceived. People don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear their alternate reality of fables and fiction and call it lies truth to them. Don't fight. Pray and seek God, continue to preach the word, continue to teach, just like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach the word and you be found faithful in the ministry that God has called you. Satan wants distraction. Satan wants us to say, oh, we can't stand what's happening in 2021. Praise be to God that we got to see 2021. There are things that we may not like, saints, but guess what? We are going to suffer having persecutions. We're going to have spiritual attacks. We're in the last days and Satan is getting busier and the things that we're going to see are going to get worse and worse. But that's why we have to be prayed up and know what's in the word and to teach and teach and teach and be ready in season and out of season, in COVID, outside of COVID, in Trump America, outside of Trump America. We have to be ready to speak the word of God's word in truth and in love. So let's get started with this question. What's your choice, life or death? And I'm going to start off. Let's go to Deuteronomy. We got some scriptures to read because my word won't do nothing for you. But God says his word will not return void. So let's start out. Even though we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 29, I want to start in Deuteronomy 30. And I want to read the last verse excuse me, of 29. I'm screwing you off. I apologize. Verse 29 says, the secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. That's Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse, it's uh, 29, verse 29. Now, We're going to have a lot of things that you're going to see. What does revealed mean? Somebody shows you something. Someone explains something. Well, in this case, the word of God is trying to share things and explain and reveal things to all of us for us to have a greater knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and his word from Genesis to Revelation. Now, there's some precious things out of Deuteronomy 29 and 30 that I want you to see and I want you to see them and I'm going to tell you where you you got to read the whole 29 and 30 but we're going to read some key scriptures right now. Now what are the revealed things that he wants to show you plainly because before I ask you this question about life and death you're going to say oh sister Helm I'm a Christian I've been a Christian I've been a member of it. No 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 strip that away for now. I want you to hear some things out of God's word because I don't want anyone caught unaware about their relationship with Christ. I'm not trying to confuse you, but I want you to hear what God's word teaches us that when we start to look and reflect on what's going on in our lives, some of the very things we just talked about in second Timothy four, some of this is teaching. Some of this is rebuking and exhorting. 
because some of us are a little off track. We're a little flaky. And the reason why I use the milkshake Monday that I say, um, you know, I'm on the fence because God has said in his word, we're going to go to Revelation 3 to talk about people who are on this fence of being lukewarm. They're one foot in the world, one foot in, in the kingdom. It doesn't work like that. You're not a little bit pregnant. You're not a little bit in the kingdom and a little bit in the world. It doesn't work like that. You are all in with Christ or you're not. You're either cold outside the will of God or you're, you're in the situation where you're with God. He doesn't want this lukewarm where you're kind of playing both sides. No, we're in a battle and you can't be on one side of the battle one week and the next week you're on our side. It doesn't work that way. So let's go to Deuteronomy 29. We'll do the first scripture, verse 9. It says, therefore, keep the words of this covenant. Okay, when you say revealed, I'm showing you what God is telling us. Anita is not telling you anything. But God says, keep the words of this covenant and do them. Now you said, if I'm keeping them, aren't I doing them? Not necessarily. Keeping something. If I keep your kids for you, I'm taking care of them. I'm making sure I protect them. I'm keeping them close. I'm keeping an eye on them. I'm making sure that I have them in my sights. They're always with me. Keeping that covenant of what God's word says every day of your life, every situation you got going on, when you want to put your head low, you tell yourself, I'm keeping the word to encourage me. I'm keeping the word to tell me that God is with me. He's never leaving me. But here's the thing, action word and do them. There are words in this covenant, what God is telling us, that ministry that we talked about, those action verbs, do the work, do the words of the covenant, live that life. It says here, that you may prosper. Why would you do that? Why would you trust God? Why would you do these revealed things that he's done to you? And why would you share them with your children? Because he says that you may prosper in all that you do, not just your money. Prospering is not all about money. Prospering is about you having peace, you having the mercy of God when you know that you deserve hell, you can be merciful to other people because you know God's mercy. There are a lot of things about being prosperous that have nothing to do with financial riches and natural treasures. The prosperity of knowing that you have a God that loves you, that has sacrificed his one begotten son for you. That's a prosperous thing that you can hold your head out, that you can have confidence and knowing that you know that all things will work together because you're part of God's kingdom. You're fighting the good fight. All right, let's go to another scripture. We're going to start at 10, verse 10. All of you, start, it says, all of you stand today before the Lord, your God, your leaders and your tribes and your elders and your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones and your wives, also the stranger who's in your camp, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter into covenant with the Lord your God and into his oak, which the Lord your God makes with you today, that he may establish you today as a people for himself, and that he may be God to you, just as he has spoken to you, and just as he has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you say, oh, Miss Helen, that's Deuteronomy. That's not, that's not New Testament. That's not for us in 2021. Why wouldn't each and every one of us want to have God establish himself with us today? Why wouldn't we today want him to be identifying us as his people? I mean, is there something that he's revealing in the scripture for Deuteronomy to the saints of Israel back then that we as people who know who his son, Jesus Christ, who we who have 66 books of his love letters to us, all about Jesus Christ, his son, that we don't want to embrace these revealed things. There are secret things of God that we may not know until we get to heaven. But the things that we do know that we do see in his letters that the spirit of God is sharing with us, don't we want to embrace those things? Is it because you don't think that it has anything to do with you? Come on now. Now, I want you to go over to chapter 30. This is where the question comes from. But I want you to see some of the things in the question. We're going to start at chapter 30, verse 8 through 10 first. And then we'll keep going. 
Verse eight says, and you will again, there's been a lot of encouragement to follow the voice of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord to obey, obey, obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what Saul had to learn after he was stripped away with his leadership. Obedience with God is better than sacrifice. Because it says here, and you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord, your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand. Now, as you get ready to see this list again, you can discount and say, oh, Sister Helm, I'm not, I'm not no farmer. Oh, Sister Helm, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean the work of my hand? Y'all used to work. Some of y'all used to be bus drivers and some of you still working and you're doing all kinds of stuff. The thing is, whatever the thing that you are doing that is laboring, some of y'all raising grandkids, some of y'all doing all kinds of stuff. But God is saying, I will bless you. Just do it in my name. Do your work as unto the Lord. It says here, the Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If, conditional, if, this is a reveal that a lot of us, Oh, God, is this a good God? He's going to take care of me. I'm going to prosper. I'm prosperous. I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. All that stuff we say. But look at this. If, if you obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of, of the law. And if you turn another, if you turn to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, this is what we're struggling on the fence with. We don't want to do the turning. We don't want to surrender the all your heart and with all of our soul. We want to keep our mind filled with anything that we want to fill it. We want our soul to be wishy-washy, double-minded. The thing is, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You're not going to be blessed because you're going to one day be hanging with Satan. That stupid Match.com commercial with that darn Satan figure, red red body with antlers and horns and stuff. That crap, I'm not going to cuss on y'all today, but that crap is why our generations of adults and children are filled with stupidity. You're going to make fun of something like that. That's why God said, read the word, know the word, search out the scriptures, study the scriptures in season and out season. We're supposed to be sharing the message of the gospel, not stupidity, but that's what we share. We tell the kids, oh, I don't feel like bothering with you. Go, go watch TV. Go and listen to the radio. Go watch a movie. Just get out of my hair. I don't want to take the time to teach you the words of the covenant. I don't want to take the time to share with you the things that God said will help you prosper. I don't want to share the things that God says that will belong to me and to my children forever. That's why we got some issues. That's why the kids are not just on the fence as cold. They fallen off the fence. They say, I'm just tired. I want to kill myself. I don't want to live in this life because y'all haven't given them any tools of the gospel. Let's keep on going for this commandment, which we're getting to the part where we're going to read, which is going to be verses 14 through the end of 20. I command you today. Everything is today is instant. It's urgent. It's don't take a lifetime to make a choice because you don't know when the day that your life will be gone. God's breath of life is going away from people, young and old, black, white, brown, in the middle, rich, poor. You got to make these decisions urgently. I commend you today. It is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. Look at jump down to verse 14 of chapter 30 of Deuteronomy. But the word is very nigh near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Look at this verb, do it, do it. Live the word, keep the word, trust the word. Verse 15, see, here's the question. What's your choice, life or death? Look at where the question comes from and look at the choices you have and look how God is telling you the answer. How many teachers go and give you an exam and give you the answer and then you still fail the test? Verse 15, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, 
to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Now you'll say, oh, this is about Israel. Come on, y'all. Don't be, don't be small-minded. Expand your growth to understand that God is speaking the same truth to us. Not only did he say keep and do, now he said walk. There's a walk in your Christian life, in your Christian path, that he wants to be walking with you. It says here, verse 17, but if your heart, there's the if again, conditional, if your heart turns away, we got a lot of generations of young, old, in the middle, turning away. They never even had a choice, a lot of them, really, because we were too damn tired and didn't want to be bothered to get up and share with them the message of truth, to get them up and share with them, we're going to go and learn of God. On Sunday, the man didn't get out of the house with his wife and his children. No, we want to do our own thing. And then we wonder why the kids don't have no, no direction. And then they want to go shack with this person, shack with that person. They got 15 babies here, 15 babies there, and nobody's teaching them anything. You don't understand why they're turning? You don't know why they're turning? They didn't get to walk with God. They didn't get to keep his commandments. They didn't get to do it because all they saw you doing is kicking it, having a good time. But look what it says here. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Are we serving the verses? Are we going to have a little ditty versus a little bit of uh, Usher? We're going to go have the kids go and, and see this movie because it's got all the X-rated and R-rated stuff. Or are we going to go have them see this? Or are we going to see them sh- seeing what's going on over there? Oh, they, they're going to have sex before they even sixth grade. What are they hearing? What are they seeing? What are they perceiving that you're telling them is important? It says here, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. What's going on with people dying? They ain't just dying of COVID. They're not dying of bullets. They're just not dying of depression. They're not just dying of opioid crisis and addiction. They're dying of everything. But guess what? The whole source of it is we're a sinful creature. We have that sinful nature. And if we don't share the message of Christ and the truth of his word and have them know and obey and believe and study the word of God, then we're filling them up with all of the evil. And they can be fooled and and wooed away by the imposters, the deceivers that say, I love you, baby. I love you, honey. Handsome, I love you. And they're not giving them anything but false, deceptive, deceitful. And you wonder why they're dying. You shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth. Get this. Verse 19 is the answer. Ding, 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 ding. I call heaven and earth. As a witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death. What's your choice? Life or death? I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life. Pregnant pause, guys. That's the answer. Write it down. Live it. Keep it. Do it. Choose life. That life is in Christ. That both you and your descendants may live. You all that say you love your kids. You love your kids better than anybody else. You love your kids. You love your grandkids. My kids, are all, all, I just live for my children. Are you living for them to the point of their hell and damnation? Or are you living for them so they can know who Christ is? Who, are you living for them for this temporary plane? Are you living for them so they'll eternally know who Jesus Christ is? Because if they go before the Father... And they have no knowledge of the son. And they say, who's Jesus? What's Genesis? Is Genesis that, that musical group? Is, is Jesus uh, uh, the, the song? Is that the song by Billy? I, who, what's going on? Don't leave them unaware. It says here in verse 29 again, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Jump over to Romans chapter 10. 
Romans chapter 10, verse eight talks about the same scripture. It was talking about the word is near you. The word is nigh thee. Look at what it says in, in Romans chapter eight. But what does it say? Talking about the scriptures. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. I'm not a preacher. I'm a preacher's wife. William got the calling. I love the Lord, but I know my responsibility is to share the gospel. He said, go the, the therefore he didn't say only preachers with that gone to seminary. He didn't say only the people that have bishop and have titles and all that stuff. He said to the saints of God, we got to go and share the message of God. It says the harvest is ripe. It's plentiful, but the labors are few. You got to be a labor, but look, this is a start. You got to get saved that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. There's that believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved for with the heart. One believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Why is it everybody so shameful? Or they're afraid of saying they're Christian. Oh, somebody may ask me a question. I don't understand. Oh, Reverend Helm would understand it. I got to get Reverend Helm or maybe I can get Reverend Watts. But if I tell them I'm a Christian, then they're going to look at me. They're going to ask me questions. Why don't you say you love God? Why don't you say you love Jesus? Profess that you love Christ and that you don't know everything because there's some secret things that all of us don't know. I don't know a lot. I don't know a whole seafood, a sea of a lot. I'm just saying don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't be confused by people who are telling you lies. No man is the chosen one except for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only begotten son. And if you start to hear message after message from deceivers and deceivers, and you're not putting any truth and you're not going to the spirit of God to, so he can be a divider of what is truth. He's a spirit of truth that's going to speak about Jesus Christ. He's not going to speak about any man, Democrat, Republican, independent. If you start to focus all your attention every day on the things of a man, a sinful man, Barack Obama, Biden, Trump, Pence, all of those people, all of us share the same thing. We are sinful creatures. And once you start to think that one is less sinful than the other, we are all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We all are destined to hell yet had it not been for Christ coming and we have to accept him. But look what the scripture says. We can't be ashamed. Verse 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But look what it says. How then shall they call on him and whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? Y'all got the mouths. Speak the word of God one to another, to the stranger, to your kids, to your grandkids, to the people that you know need to be exhorted and rebuked and taught. But how shall they believe in whom of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher? Y'all don't want to take them. I mean, people are so lazy. They don't even want to pick up the phone to hear the streaming of the word. What are we going to do when we get out of COVID and we, we get vaccinated and we have all that stuff. Get your vaccinations. That's what we're supporting. Get your vaccinations. But guess what? You got to go to worship. Eventually you can't keep having uh bed and breakfast streaming all your life on the, on the, and hearing it on the radio, these are good technologies that are being used now. Praise be to God all over the globe. But guess what, saints? You're going out with a mask to do all everything you want to do. Go out and preach the word of God. Go out and say to somebody, Jesus loves you. Go out as you're passing them by at the gas station. God be glorified. Thank God that we made it to 2021. Instead of complaining and talking about everything but. That foolishness at the Capitol, that was ungodly. And that's because people are not listening to the preach word. They're listening to the deceivers. They're listening to things that are not of God. And it says, and how shall the preach they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings and good things. 
but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now we're going to go to the last scripture. I asked you the question, what's your choice, life or death? Let me tell you about death. We talked about the life. God said it. But here's the thing about death. The things that are causing people to die are enticing and seductive. It's like Satan in the garden was very subtle and shrewd when it came to Mother Eve. And what we find when it comes to why people are choosing death, because death seems fun, death seems enticing, death seems death seems sexy. And see, death, you can embrace and you can want the money. And that's exciting to have money because when you get money, you can have all these cares of your life, your bills and the things with your kids and the houses and the cars and all the stuff that you got going on. You seem like you can take care of it all. You think you can participate in the love of your life because you got all this stuff going on. Death's going to say, hey, come on now. You don't need to listen to the, the gospel. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to hear the voice of the Lord because guess what? We can do our habits of our life. We can have fun with them habits. We, got, we can have fun with those, those, those sins that so easily beset us because, you know, that's fun. Our flesh can have so many feelings with so many people. We can have those hobbies that we just love in life. We can have the happiness. We can have the things that they sing about in the song. We can just, you know, love and leave them. All that stuff. All of it. Just follow the path of death. And you say, how do I know? Let's hear from the Savior himself. Let's go to Revelations chapter 3. The reason why I put the fence is because some people believe that just going to church is going to save them. You know? been a member for 30 years. I'm a trustee. I'm part of the usher board. I'm part of the auxiliary here. I've got a bishop. I've been this, that, and the other. You don't want Christ to see you in heaven and he don't vouch for you and say to the father that this is one of mine. I know her. I know him. They're my children. You don't want to get up there and say, hey, why aren't you recognizing me? Don't you know I used to be a bishop? Don't you know I used to be a trustee? Don't you know I used to do all this stuff? And he, I say this every week because I want y'all to hear it. You don't want Christ to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But look what he says in Revelations chapter 3. Let's start at verse 14. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. On that fence, there's a cold side and there's a hot side. He said, you're not cold. You're not hot. Hot is with Christ. Cold is with, you know, the the death and the devil and the evil. It says, I know your works that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish, this is Christ speaking to us. I could wish you were cold. He said, "I, I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, If you were cold or hot, because you're lukewarm. God, you know how you got lukewarm, got a little bit of hot, a little bit cold, and it's all in between. It's not hot. It's not cold. But it says, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Christ doesn't want this wishy-washiness. And we got people who are choosing to be part world and part in the gospel of Jesus Christ, working and believing and keeping and walking and doing the will of God. That's hot. But we got this wishy-washy. Oh, if I feel like I trust Jesus this day, maybe. Oh, I don't feel like really doing that that stuff with the Christianity. I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel it. I don't feel it. Pastor wants me to do this. I just don't feel it. Oh, they want me to mentor somebody. I I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it. I'll tell you, I I promised somebody I wouldn't give the identity, but I was so touched over the holidays of uh, New Year's. Somebody was saying that uh, a stranger in the church, uh, you know, we're not strangers. We're all part of the body, but this person didn't know the person in the church. Church is large enough that they didn't know. And this person came up to this 
new person in their church and they said, um, ask them, would they be willing for them to have a Bible study together? And the person didn't know the person, but he said, you know, he thought about it and he agreed. That's where the person who is a stronger Christian will offer. Maybe that person is just as strong, but I suspect that that person that was a stronger recognized that they needed some help to learn and to grow. Remember about the second Timothy four, we who are stronger in our faith need to teach those who are coming in because Satan has the way of enticing them back to pull them back to the death side, to pull them back to the wide gate, to pull them back to the things that are so enticing that they say it's better to be on the cold side than even be in the hot side. And then you find these new believers who don't have somebody who's kind of being there in their corner to teach them, to encourage them, to exhort them, to rebuke them at times and love. So you don't need to do that. That ain't healthy for you. That's not healthy for your walk with Christ. That's not healthy for you keeping the word of God close to you and doing the word. But see, we don't have time. We got time for everything else but the things that God wants us to have time with. We are in the last days. The things that we saw, I was shocked to see what I saw at the Capitol. I wasn't paying attention to the TV and I, in the sense of that. And when I found about it, I looked at it and I said, this is sick. And you hear people say it's going to get worse and threats and threats. But this is because the evil one is getting more aware that God, we don't know what the father's time timetable is, but he knows his time is winding down because things are getting worse. We are in the last days, saints. And it's my prayer that you remember the answer to the exam. Choose life. Choose the blessings of God. Choose the love of God. Believe in him. Trust in him. You're not going to be perfect. None of us are. But go to him in prayer and ask his forgiveness and repentance and ask him to come into your heart and trust that he loves you enough to put all of that sin on his back. When they taught this week at our church about the cross was heavy, but it wasn't the weight of the cross. It was the anger of the Lord against the sin of all of us. And that Christ bore all of that in his flesh, knowing how we all were messed up. But he says, I love them. And he chose to come. He chose to sacrifice his life. And I want you to ask this, this question about the today. Today, if tonight and today, the last minutes of this day ebb away, and this is the last day that you get to spend in this natural plane, and the breath of life is taken away from you, are you ready to go before the Father? And will Jesus know you? You think you know Christ, but do you know that you know that you know that Christ knows you? And he will say to the Father, this is one of my children. That he will understand what you profess in Romans 8, 10, verse 8 through 13. Will he understand that you're not ashamed here so that he won't be ashamed there? Get real, guys. We're not playing games. Satan is taking off his playtime gloves and he's starting to punch real weight and he's sending some fiery darts and you can have the whole arm of God or you can play games. But if you're playing games, watch out. Watch out. Lord willing, I'd love to see you next week. Uh, next week is a holiday, but I think that we still will be having Milkshake Monday. God bless you and thank you for joining us. Love you.